Hello, my name is Thomas Little, I'm a SQL Server DBA, and I've been a DBA now for about 10 years. And today we're going to talk about Management Data Warehouse within SQL Server 2008 R2. Management Data Warehouse is a relational database that contains data from target SQL servers, and you can use this collection of data to create custom reports or use the CAN reports within Management Studio. And it's a combination of SQL Server agent jobs, SSIS packages, and maintenance plans that are created to collect this data for the Management Data Warehouse. There are three default data collectors within MDW. There's the disk usage data collector, which tracks database growth and log file growth on a per day basis. There's the server activity data collector, which provides an overview of SQL server activity, resource utilization, and contention, such as CPU, I.O., and network I.O. Then there's the query stats data collector, and that gathers data about query statistics and individual queries, query plans, or even specific queries. And you can read a lot more with the link below to get an understanding of all the default collectors within the management, management data warehouse. You can also create custom data collectors. In the demonstration I'm going to provide you, we're not going to go through custom data collectors, but I wanted to bring it up because you can create them. And it allows you to collect data that is outside of the three default data collectors I showed you in the previous slide. Now there are some suggestions, my suggestions, and requirements for MDW. I would suggest that you keep a retention history for your collection set or the data collected to three to five days instead of the default 14 days. In my experience, there have been a number of issues as the data, is co as the data collected grows with blocking, deadlocks, um, and long running queries when you query the MDW schema. You also want to select a centralized server to collect all this data from your target servers. And you want to select a server that doesn't have performance issues such as CPU, I.O., and memory. And when you create custom data collectors, you want to limit the number of custom data collectors. The default query or the default data sets actually allow you or give you a lot of information so I would suggest that you look at those first before deciding to create a custom collection set in your management data warehouse. You can find more information on MDW in the links below. The first one is a, is a blog that I've read by Bill Ramo and he talks about how to create the reports to go against your management data warehouse that look a lot like the canned reports that are available within Management Studio. And I'm going to show you some of those reports in our demonstration. You can also go to the MSDN website to get more information on the exact details and how Management Data Warehouse and the collection sets are structured and, and run to get a better understanding when you're creating custom data collectors. So right now we're going to do a demo. I'm going to do two demos. One is how to set up a management data warehouse, the central management data warehouse. And the second is how to set up a collection set to report to a centralized MDW. And we'll go through that in a minute. So here I have management, uh, management Studio set up and I have two instances, Instance 1 and Instance 2. Now, I've, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go through how to set up a Management Data Warehouse database. And the first thing that you want to do is you want to create a new database and we're going to call it DBA MDW. I'm going to create that. Okay, and you'll see here that our database is created. Now we're going to set up the Management Data Warehouse. And how you do that is if you collect 
if you click on management or expand management you'll see an icon here called data collection what you're going to do is right click on that and you want to configure management data warehouse you're going to be presented with this wizard you're going to click next and you're going to choose create or upgrade a management data warehouse click next and you're going to choose the database that you want to have the schema created for your management data warehouse. We set up DBA MDW. We're going to click Next. Here you're going to manage logins. Now the logins allow users to be able to query the schema within the management data warehouse. In this instance we don't have any users set up but you can actually create new logins to allow people to query the warehouse. They can create their own reports within SSRS, uh, they can just do ad hoc queries within there. So we're not going to set up any new logins, but here is the role, the logins and the roles that you can assign to those warehouses. You, they can be an admin, which means they can administer or change the management data warehouse. They can be a data reader, which will allow them to go through and read uh, data within the database, or they could be a writer and they can set up their own collection sets, things to that effect. I'm going to click Next and we're going to click Finish. So here it's going through and creating the schema and mapping all the users that we set up to our management data warehouse. Okay, click Close. And when you go back to the database that we set up, you'll see that this new schema is now created. Now we're not going to go through all of the tables here, but you can use the link that I set up in the presentation to go through and understand the schema of the Management Data Warehouse. So the next thing that we're going to do is how to set up a collection set to report to a centralized data warehouse. Now for the purposes of this demonstration in this instant one, Instance 1 server, we already set up a management data warehouse that has been collecting just in this instance. Okay, But what I'm going to show you is how to set up instance 2 to report to instance 1 this DBA MDW. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to right click on data collection. We're going to go and configure and we're going to use this another option called setup data collection and we're going to click Next. And now we're going to choose our server and database and we're also going to choose our uh, cache directory. So first let's choose the server and remember I already set up a data warehouse on instance 1 so we're going to connect to that. By default it will automatically choose or pick which database or list, I'm sorry, which database is the MDW storage database. We're going to click Next. Now we're going to choose a cache directory. What the cache directory does is for collection sets that have to continuously run, they create files on the OS to collect that data. So we're going to end and choose our data collector. And we set it up on C, Program Files, Microsoft SQL Server, Instance 1. And you'll see here I created this directory. This is not by default. I created this directory called Data Collector. And as a rule of thumb, what I like to do is create a directory that is outside of the, um, there, or that is specific to data collection itself. That way it's better administered. So I set that up. I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to click Next. And I'm going to click Finish. Now what's going to start here is it's going to set up and enable all the system data collectors within the Management Data Warehouse. It's going to set up all the SQL jobs, SSIS packages, all the maintenance plans. It's going to set that all up for us. Click OK. Now what you'll see is that if we expand the data collection and the system data collectors, you will see those three data collectors that we talked about in the previous slides. You will also see when you look at the SQL jobs, new SQL jobs that were set up. 
and you'll see that they're continually executing. There are some collections that are set up to continually execute and collect data on a on a specific time frame and it sets up or creates those files in that data collector directory that I created and then on a periodic basis these upload jobs will run and upload the data to the management data warehouse. Okay. Now what we're going to do is now look at some of the reports that are created for the management data warehouse. So again this DA MDW on instance one is our centralized server and in management studio there are canned reports that you can create and you can access them by right clicking on the warehouse database going to reports and you'll see this new management data warehouse option available to you. You're going to go ahead and choose that and then you're going to choose overview. Now you'll see here that part of this report uh, there are the three data collection sets that we set up and this is by default. And what you can do is you can click on these reports to get information about the data that is collected for each of the collection sets reporting to the management data warehouse. Here you'll see there are VentureWorks database, its size. Uh, once we start collecting more information over a three to five day period, you can, you'll see trends, you'll see average growth per day. Okay. If we go back, we can look at query statistics. Clicking on that, you can see a report on top queries uh, by CPU, by duration, by total I.O., physical reads, logical writes, and you can click on these queries to get more information or even detailed information about them. So for example, we're going to click on query number two and we're going to see the object that is executed, the actual SQL that is within that object. You're going to see average executions per minute, total execution. So you'll see a lot of data in here uh, that will help you troubleshoot issues or be able to report to management about instances or about databases in that particular instance or collection set. You'll be able to go and see top query plans by CPU, by duration, physical reads, logical writes, You'll be able to click on the plans that are actually created in cache and get even more detailed information about those plans. You can see here that it tells us parameters that were passed. Uh, you can see again average CPU, total executions, total CPU in seconds and duration. So you can see all this great information about this particular query. You can get down to the actual query level. You can also click on past history too. So if we want to do at a particular time, you can see information about that particular time. You'll see that our total CPU per second has decreased on this particular date by selecting this date range. Okay. You can go, let's go back to the first, see if there's anything there. Here's information. So you can go back, let's go back to the overview. Here we can see server activity. And what you can do here is you can see activity by CPU, by memory usage, by disk I.O. You can see CPU weights and be able to click on some of these graphs to be able to get detailed information. Let's click on SQL Server Weights. You can see here uh, detailed information about particular weight categories to help you troubleshoot particular issues within your server. You can also again in these reports go back in time or go back in in particular points in time of data collection. You can get detailed information about that. So that is Management Data Warehouse. If you have any questions please email me at tlittle30 at gmail.com. That's T-L-I-D-D-L-E, the number 30, at gmail.com. Thank you.